Welcome to a special edition of the post game in TYT Sports presenting the rundown. Jason joined by Justin and beaming in from Phoenix, Arizona. A uh, very special guest today. If you are a Dota 2 fan, really a MOBA fan of any generation, uh, Suns fan TV, Suns fan has been uh, on the Dota scene for a while now and his YouTube channel very popular at uh, Dota Cinema. So first off, Suns fan, great to have you on. How are you doing today? Pretty good. You guys look so professional. And <laughs> I'm just the st stereotypical neckbeard gamer here in my ragged t-shirt just waking up, so making me feel a little inadequate, but, uh, but I'm doing well. How about you, you guys? See, you refer to it as that. We refer to that as being authentic, which is very important. <laughs> so uh, comparing esports uh, like, and Dota exactly to mainstream sports like the NBA, we've done a few clips uh, on TYT Sports and with the post game as well, where we've brought on different personalities from the Young Turks, we've brought on different personalities from the post game to kind of debate back and forth whether or not esports is a sport or if it should be its own separate entity and kind of how the personalities feel about that. So the main question here is, do you think esports is a sport or would you prefer it to be its own separate life? I think it's, I guess it de uh, depends on your definition of a sport, right? I think it's a sport. I mean, just because you're not, I mean, you technically you could sweat during a Dota match, right? <laughs> that's, that's another thing entirely. Uh, I, don't, I think it's one of those things where if you look back through history, and this is where people just forget all these, like, this has been brought up before just in a different way. Like NBA, people talked about this. I mean, it, of course, that was many decades ago at this point. But it, there's always this, this evolution, right? And because we're the generation that's bringing this up uh, now, it's kind of looked at a little bit down upon about from people that haven't really experienced it themselves. And they can't really understand it, and that's perfectly fine. But it doesn't really mean that it can't be a sport. And I think that with the growth of esports that we're seeing now with TI and then all these other, others, all these other games... I mean, it, I think it's pretty evident that it is a sport and that eventually, if you look at like Korea, it's eventually going to get to that point. You're right, and I agree with that 100%. I mean, and Justin, I know, is in agreement too. When we've d had these discussions in the past, I mean, the reason why we watch sports, at least the reason I watch sports, and I'm sure Justin, I'm sure yourself too, Suns fan, uh, is it's entertaining and it's unpredictable. And those two qualities of it are absolutely a part of Dota. And when you have millions of viewers watching these live streams, for the international, it's, it's exponentially more than that of just one random uh, player on Twitch who gets twenty to 30,000 viewers a night just from playing the game. Uh, so uh, here's a fun question. It might be a little more difficult, though. Uh, do you think there's a Michael Jordan of Dota or who is like, really st starting that uh, trek of being the GOAT of Dota, the greatest of all time? Um, so that is such a tough comparison because it's never a one-to-one, -one, right? Even in basketball, you can't say who's the Michael Jordan. There's no such thing, right? So I guess the closest comparison, the ambassador, if you will, Michael Jordan would probably be Dendi. Um, even though he may not be the best in the world right now, uh, I think that he kind of brought the game onto the scene in a lot of ways. Uh, like the LeBron James, I guess, would be Arteezy. He's currently the best player in the world. Although you can't really compare one-to-one, -one, like I said, because like with Arteezy, uh, Play-wise, sure, he's the best in the world, so you can compare him to LeBron. But attitude-wise or personality, it's completely different. He's more like a Rashid Wallace, right? Like <laughs> on the court or in, on Twitch in this, in this case, he's kind of uh, looked at in... It's a love-hate relationship in a lot of ways, but then in person, he's perfectly nice. So I guess the closest comparison personality-wise is actually Rashid Wallace, uh, who's, I guess, an older school player. So that may not be the best uh, representation, but... The, the very rare Rashid Wallace <laughs> comparison. Yeah. I wasn't sure if that was going to come up, but somewhere in the notes I have, I wonder who Rashid Wallace of Dota is, but uh, Justin, <laughs> if you'd like to continue. So, Suns fan, I'm, I'm glad you brought up Arteezy because something interesting that happened right after the International was obviously EG's dropping of AUI 2000. Uh, for our audience that doesn't know, the team that won the International, Evil Geniuses, ended up dropping one of their, one of their players because Arteezy, who we sort of just called the LeBron James or Rashid Wallace of of Dota was available. Could you maybe talk about uh, your reaction, your reaction to that, and maybe the insights into Dota? Kind of is a business. If the best region is available, do you pick up the best player, or how do you think they, that went about? I think it really just depends on the team dynamic, uh, and of course, I don't know the team in depth as far as EG is concerned and what problems they may or may not have had. Obviously, they won TI, so it couldn't have been so bad. But they did have extremely good relationship with Artis. So it's not like they just picked the best player, right? Just randomly. They played with him before. They're really good friends. And I, for one, was super happy that they, they kicked AUI because now he's, he was available and then we got him on our team. So I can't be too sad about that, I guess. <laughs> 
that's actually a very good point. I mean, uh, when it comes to uh, the whole free agency, the business aspect of this, of, of really, I want to stick to Dota for that reason. Well, mostly because the Dota Cinema Channel run by yourself. But Dota has blown up more so than all of the others. And League of Legends isn't so far behind. But when you look at the MOBA culture... Uh, it, and how much money is going into Dota, too. Right. It's, it's, a, it's shocking. And that's the only way to put it. But it's not so different than really any other sports business run by, and I'm going to stick to the NBA still, where you see guys signing contracts for $25 million a year, and some are being severely overpaid. Do you think that uh, we're going to get to that point with uh, esports and Dota specifically? Contracts, agents, managers, I know we have some kind of form of that already, but it's the loose groundwork of it. What's going to happen, I guess, or where do you see it going in the future? Yeah, I, I see it evolving to that point eventually. And you're talking about players being overpaid, and technically speaking, like from an outside perspective, you could say this guy's getting paid $25 million, the NBA is getting overpaid. But if you really look at it, the, the value that he brings, even if he doesn't play, just from a merchandising standpoint, is actually huge, right? Uh, and owners are just, I think right now, with the current collective bargaining agreement, the owners are actually getting a better deal out of it. So technically, right. a lot of the players are not getting overpaid. But that's obviously a case-by-case -case basis. As far as like agents and all that stuff, it's happening. And eventually, when we talk about my team and our, my new studios, we're kind of taking that model to some degree uh, and moving forward with it. I think it, it's happening very slowly, and I can't speak to whether you know, people are going to get millions of dollars from contracts alone as far as Dota, but I think it is safe to say eventually that's going to happen. I just don't know if Dota is going to be the game. I think we know we've gotten to that point when Mark Cuban is standing outside uh, your house knocking on the door asking <laughs> if you're going to be signing with, uh, yeah. with Suns fan or a different team. But uh, Suns fan, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, there's one thing I can assure you on the top 10 fails of the week. I am probably on many of them or will be on many of them in the future <laughs> as I start my Dota 2 playing career. I played a lot of League of Legends as I was talking with Justin beforehand. Uh, you can check out Suns fan over at his YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Dota Cinema. Uh, where else can we find you? I know you got a lot of stuff with Moonduck Studios, with the agency. Well, where do you want to direct people towards? Uh, digitalchaos.gg and Moonduck TV. All right, look Moonduck out. TV, that is. Got it. Look out for all those. We'll make sure to pack the description box with links so you can check out all that great uh, stuff and content. Suns fan, again, thanks for joining us. Justin, Jason, this has been the, a special edition of The Rundown uh, where we got to speak with Suns fan and uh, talk a little bit about Dota 2, which needs more conversation in the media as it is. Don't forget to leave all your comments in the comment section below. We talked a lot throughout this clip, a nice 25-minute package. We think we'll be breaking them up as it is, but any questions you have, throw them in the comment section. We'll do your best. We'll do our best to answer them. Follow SunsFan at SunsFanTV, at Justin Moser. Is there an underscore? Justin underscore Moser, yes. Underscore Moser. At Jason Rubin 91 We'll see you next time.